Hey guys, David here and welcome to Digital Outlook. Guys, do we have some amazing information to throw down regarding this SEC appeal? And guys, let me tell you something, it's not as bad as you think. So guys, let's get to it. So guys, before we kick the video off today, I have to give a major shout out to a couple of our subscribers, David and Della. Now guys, I have done a number of coaching sessions over the last few months with David and David and Della run an apparel and design company. And guys, just check out the amazing blessing that they had sent Judy and I right here. Guys, they sent us all of this apparel. They put our logos on it logos even on the hats, beautiful XRP hats, and plenty of them. They sent us these amazing shirts, and guys, look at the logos on these shirts. You got XRP logos all over the place, and absolute amazing quality materials. Now, guys, I myself have a spread shop store, but I can tell you right now, none of it compares to the quality of these products that these guys send. And guys, I can't express my thanks enough to you in this community. And we've had a number of folks and been able to give a number of shout outs to folks that have come out there and have shared us with coffee cups and all kinds of different things. Just some amazing, amazing blessings. Guys, the support that you give us, it is so, so phenomenal. Now, because David's products, I'll tell you what, like I said, they blow ours away because what we've got in our little spread shop there are the products that they supply and they put our logo and stuff on there. But guys, let me share with you David's website. It's called Drive and it's driven by style, driven by design. Jackets, of course, those caps, all the shirts and things that we saw, headwear, shirts, accessories, and things like that, that you could go out there for those of you that are looking for quality products, you know, to display your brand. I want to give them a shout out and I'll tell you what, they don't even know I'm giving them this shout out. Guys, I'm doing it as an expression of my genuine thanks for the blessing that they have been and how they have blessed us. And I'll tell you what, amazing, amazing, amazing. Now, guys, let's get in to this, what we need to talk about today, this entire SEC deal, because boy, are people's nerves falling literally out of the sky. Now, guys, just check this article out right here, and we are going to do some dissecting. Now, SEC appeals Ripple case, citing errors in the final judgment. Well, guys, the main error is they just don't like it. Now, listen to this right here. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has filed a formal notice of appeal against Ripple Labs. Well, in fact, it's actually a notice of intention to file. And I believe that we're going to see a timeline that Fred Merspoli had put out there. But I believe they have a couple months. Now, listen to this. And they filed it in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Now, the appeals court follows a district court ruling in August, which the SEC argues contains significant legal errors. Well, listen to this right here. On October 2nd, the SEC submitted its notice of appeal in the ongoing case against Ripple Labs and its executives, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. Now, the SEC filing challenges the final judgment entered by U.S. District Court for Southern District of New York on August 7, 2024, which, of course, was Judge Annalisa Torres' final judgment. Now, that judgment, they're saying, marked a partial victory for Ripple Labs, but was contested by the SEC, which continued to assert that Ripple's distribution of XRP tokens violated federal securities laws. Well, one of the things they don't like, guys, is they don't like the whole $125 million. They're going after that whole $2 billion. Again, look at that. Now, according to the appeal document, the SEC's legal team argues that the district's court's interpretation of key securities regulations was flawed. Absolute phony baloney. Guys, the SEC themselves have literally retracted those statements where they came up with, oh, digital asset securities, no such thing ever existed. And they've retracted that from other notices of motion that they filed against various, you know, exchanges and things like that, taking those right out of there. They're doubling down because, of course, they're wanting to save face. The fact of the matter is Judge Annalisa Torres adjudicated this case 
using the prongs of the Howey test, which is what the SEC wanted her to do. What they're saying is, oh, well, she was wrong in how she interpreted. Guys, that is absolute hogwash, and a major amount of legal analysts believe they don't even have a snowball's chance in you know where to actually win this now. The SEC contends a prop that the court failed to properly apply the high Howey test, a standard used to determine whether a transaction qualifies as an investment contract. The commission's attorneys believe this misapplication undermines the regulatory authority of the SEC. Why, guys? Because they want jurisdiction over the entirety of this digital asset space, even though they know very well that it does not fit the actual prongs of the Howey test. In fact, when they were before Congress or Gary Ginsler was, a question was asked about, hey, if I went out there and I bought some trading cards for ball, you know, baseball cards and this and this and that, you know, would those be secure? Oh no, those won't be securities. Well, what's the difference between that and an NFT? That is a trading NFT and I'm buying it, hoping that it appreciates it just like I would a baseball card. Well, guys, this is the nonsense because it's a digital collectible, just like you have a tangible collectible with a baseball card and they know they're way out of touch. Well, with the Ripple case, XRP in and of itself does not form a security and why guys is not like a stock by holding it. Do we have any rights against Ripple? No, as holders, we don't. Do we get dividends? If Ripple does well out of their shares, nope, we don't. Do we get the vote on pro? No, none of those things. And guys, like the oranges in the Howey test, the oranges themselves were not the security. It was the contracts associated with it. Well, how on earth in the secondary market is there any contract between us and somebody else, depending on the efforts of others, to do it? Do we have some contractual agreement? No, guys, we don't. They're missing such a huge amount. That's what these legal experts are throwing out there. The SEC is totally off the rocker. But guys, what it is, it's a non-faithful allegiance to the law. They really do not want to. Look, do you believe that this is happening because they're out there to protect you and I as retail investors? Genuinely, do you believe that? Not in your life. Who's being harmed now, guys? Who's being harmed? I mean, obviously, all of the original contractors, no fraud. Nobody lost any money. In fact, they made money big time. So no discouragement. On and on and on. The only people being harmed by this, guys, are you and I, the people that the SEC say they're out there to protect. What a load of hogwash. Now, get this. Ripple Labs CEO Brad Garlinghouse responded to the appeal filing on X. Somehow they still haven't gotten the message. They lost on everything that matters, Garlinghouse stated. Ripple, the crypto industry, and the rule of law have already prevailed. While we'll fight in court for as long as we need, let's be clear. XRP status as a non-security is the law of the land today, and that does not change even in the face of this misguided and infuriating appeal. Boom. Guys, the deal is this. It is not like when they originally dropped the lawsuit in December of 2020. And guys, think about this too. Do you know what was going on in December of 2020? Well, there was going to be the flare snapshot. Do you know how many retail investors were literally FOMOing into our, our XRP to participate in that? Do you think the SEC thought two hoots about them when they dropped the lawsuit, when they could have given a, a warning out there to the industry that, hey, we're thinking about doing something here? Nope, guys, they didn't. Not on your life, they just dropped it. Jay Clayton dropped it on the last day, leaving the office as the commissioner. Gary Gensler's just kept this train humming with this regulation by enforcement. Amazing how much when he was a professor that he understood about digital assets and that XRP did not really qualify as a security. Oh, he knew that then when he became commissioner of the SEC. Boy, did his change ever tune. And he'll sit right there before the House Financial Services Committee. Can't even tell you whether Ethereum or or any of these things are genuinely doesn't he just will not answer it guys because they want confusion in the space this is not about clarity it's not about getting fairness it's not about undermining regulatory authority for the sec it's guys it's regulation by enforcement and it's completely illegal and that's why the court rebuked the sec for not having a faithful allegiance to the law and brad garlinghouse is absolutely right it doesn't change one thing XRP, even now with an appeal, stays that status as a non security is the law of the land, whether they like it or they don't. Now, 
Ripple Labs executive added, remember when the SEC tried unsuccessfully to file an interlocutory appeal? They made clear they had no intention of challenging XRP status as a non-security. So now they want to do that? The appeal filed on behalf of the SEC will bring the case before the U.S. Court of Appeals for further review. As the case progresses, both Ripple Labs and the SEC will continue their legal battle, which has broader implications for the classification of cryptocurrencies in U.S. securities law. Ripple Chief Legal Officer Stuart Alderati wrote that the SEC's decision to appeal is disappointing, but not surprising. This just prolongs what's already a complete embarrassment for the agency, he added. Now, guys, Here it is right here. And this is Stuart Alderati replying to this whole thing. He's the chief legal officer. What a job these guys have done. The SEC's decision to appeal is disappointing, but not surprising, guys. I think a lot of us were almost feeling like it was coming, but it wasn't going to make much of a difference. In fact, when you look at the price, do you know I was there when the SEC dropped the lawsuit initially um, in December 2020? The price just absolutely bang, literally like that from 50 some cents to 17 cents. Guys, where are we at? We're back down tagging prior resistance as support at that 50. 53, 52, 54 cent range in there. It's not like it took a nosedive and there's no exchange. It's delisting it. How about that? Now, listen to this. This just prolongs what's already a complete embarrassment for the agency. The court already rejected the SEC's suggestion that Ripple acted recklessly and there were no allegations of fraud and, of course, there were no victims or losses. Instead of faithfully applying the law, this agency under this chair, Gary Gensler, continues to engage in litigation warfare against the industry and they were called out. Gary was called out on it by Tom Ember right there before Congress. I'll tell you what, guys, in this next selection cycle, you want to pay close attention to who's backing this space and who isn't. And there are some people that need to be turfed right out of there in my estimation. Now, we are evaluating whether to file a cross appeal, and I'd say go for it. File a cross appeal, make them spend every last dime, cause them to bleed in pain is what I would possibly say, because guys, I'll tell you what, these these folks, they have no shame, and they need to be literally, practically paraded naked down the street before they'll ever wake up to the shame and the reality of the games that they've played in this space It has nothing to do with protecting, like I say, you and I as retail investors, absolutely nothing. Their big deal is, oh my goodness, we're going to lose jurisdiction. Well, guys, who interests are they supporting? Yours and mine or their own interests? Or, hey, how about a lot of these big traditional players? How about their interests? Yep, guys, this is literally litigation warfare, what Stuart Alderati says now. Either way, the SEC's lawsuit has been irrational and misguided from the start, and we're ready to prove that yet again in the appellate court, once again taking the lead for the industry. Coincidence, get this, that the SEC's enforcement director announced his resignation about an hour before this? Boom. And guys, another thing too. Do you kind of think, get the feeling that Bitwise and their you know, application for a XRP ETF was really thrown out there to push the SEC to show their hand? Boom. That's kind of what I'm thinking, guys. This is a big, big deal. And by the way, if you want to look this up, here's James K. Filing, another legal analyst in this XRP community looking over this case and here's the case number right here document date filed and this is all that's on there and guys you can go look this deal up now this is very interesting out of fred rispoli and i really like it because he's breaking down a timeline now some folks are going to take this information and all the fud that they're going to try to throw against the window but guys i want to point some things out as i go through this that will really amaze you now 
For XRP holders, here's the SEC versus Ripple appellate timeline. SEC brief likely due by December 2nd, 2024. Now, the SEC is likely to seek a permissible 30-day extension, so it will be due probably around January 1st of 2025. Ripple will cross-appeal. That's what we're all expecting, and I think we, they should. Its opening brief will be due around the same time. Now, the opposition briefs will be due about February of 2025. Ripple will likely take its extension and taking that into March. Now, reply briefs will be due at the end of March of 2025. An oral argument will be scheduled for sometime September, October of 2025, and a ruling will be handed down from the Second Circuit Court in January 2026 at the earliest, but likely March to April. So guys, what we're talking is probably another year and a half of going through this whole thing now. Having said that, this is what I want to throw out there. Boy, had the Fudsters been laying it on thick. Oh my gosh, you may as well kiss XRP goodbye during this bull run. Da, 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 da. Guys, I don't believe it. I do not believe it. Now, why don't I believe it? Well, because Judy and I were buying XRP way before that lawsuit dropped. Price of XRP, like I said, dropped down to 17.48 cents, and four months later, it was a dollar ninety-seven. Now that was a twelve hundred percent move. Guys, I genuinely believe that we are going to see way more than that out of XRP this bull run because XRP in and of itself is not a security. You don't have every exchange in the U.S. delisting it. Grayscale is not going to go out there and drop their XRP trust or any of things that happen like that. Guys, this is a totally different environment and the SEC has already got their backsides handed to them and I believe that the appellate court is going to look at this. They might even deny the applicant the filing of the appeal because of how ridiculous it is. They can see the SEC is not in a genuine way, you know, coming at this case and appealing it for really genuine purposes. Nope, it has nothing to do with that, guys. The very fact that in other court filings, they literally removed that whole premise that ADA was a security and ALGO was a security and all those, they took that all the way back off the table, guys, because they know they can't prove it and they can't prove this either. Annalisa Torres is an absolutely amazing judge. And by the way, I'm going to throw this out there. She was a Democrat appointed judge, but she adjudicated this case right according to the law. And the appellate court is going to see that. The way in which she came to her decision about the prongs of the Howey test, there is no contractual agreement between XRP in the retail market and contractual sales with Ripple. None whatsoever. I don't care what the Fudster says, the Max Kaisers and all the other idiots out there that want to throw down, you know, how bad it was when the first lawsuit was laid and you had Vitalik Buterin calling XRP and S-Coin. And of course, they all jumped on the bandwagon for that. Guys, I'm going to tell you something. The Phoenix is going to literally rise from the ashes in this situation. I absolutely believe it. But they want you to literally dump your confidence, be absolutely sunken down there deep and discouragement and on and on. Guys, I'm going to tell you for Judy and I, we see the price drop to certain targets and they're a little bit lower than where we are now. I'm telling you what, we're just going to be backing up the truck because we have done our homework. We have done our research. Do you think that Ripple that just secured one of the most major fintech licenses in the wide world out there in Dubai and on top of that, helping to, you know, teaming up with Hedera Hashgraph and a bunch of these other, you know, ecosystems to enable institutions to do what? To actually comply with the EU's micro rules when it, regarding this digital asset space. And further to that, we're looking at, a, at an environment where legal clarity from Congress is coming in a massive way. I think Gensler knows his time is, is limited. And on top of that, you know, he was just had his feet held to the fire. Do you think he didn't know what his plan was for this then? Of course, guys, he did. But he, this is done with absolute smack you in the face malice. That's what it is. Let's be honest, guys. These are not these are not things in an agency that's out there to really protect You know the retail investor, which is their mandate. Nope, this has nothing to do with it. Guys, it literally has to do with the fact that they 
do not want to lose what it that they believe this misapplication undermines the regulatory authority of the SEC. This is all about them saving face. It's not about anything to do with them saving us. I'll tell you that right now. Guys, do not let them shake you out because I'll tell you what, a great day is on the way. And most of us really did see this coming. Now, of course, we hope that they had the good common sense not to do it. But even as they have, the likelihood of them succeeding, slim to none. Guys, something big is on the way. Don't miss it. Get out there. Genuinely research it for yourself. Don't take all of these naysayers and their FUD and all this and that and let that heap on you guys. We were there. We watched it happen. It was absolutely amazing. And having been there, guys, I'm just ready for what's coming next. And I think it's going to be massive. So guys, with everything that's going on in this space, there is no better time than the absolute present to get your strategic plan in place. And what our coaching program offers, that is where you and I can meet personally, one-on-one for one hour over Zoom. And during that time, I share with you our personal journey in that last bull run and what enabled Judy and I to experience experience some amazing financial success. I share with you the mistakes we made so that you don't have to fall into the same pitfalls we did. We take a look at your portfolio and make sure that it's balanced towards your goals and we work together to develop your exit strategy. We can even get your assets off an exchange and onto a hardware wallet along with delivering to you some amazing amazing techniques that are really going to help you in this space. Now, the cost of that is $250. And if that's something that interests you, you write me right there at coaching at the digitaloutlook.com and we'll get y'all booked in. So guys, I truly hope that you enjoyed today's video. And as always, it's not financial advice. It's just my two cents. Hit the like and subscribe and drop your comments right down there in the comment section. And I'll catch you in the next one. 